just got blessed to fly. I'm not sure how well this will work out. It's a little windy this afternoon. Hopefully there's not too much wind noise. But I know a couple of you have asked about the plane that I fly, whether it's you're just interested in the plane or there's a couple guys I know that are Comanche people that uh, fly Comanches and a couple that just like Comanches. So I was going to tell you a little bit about the plane. We'll do a little walk around and show you 8192 Papa. So this is a Comanche 180. The Comanche 180 has the four-cylinder engine, 180 horsepower on the ground, and it's playing at 75% power, which is our high-speed cruise. It's about 139 knots on 10 gallons an hour. You're seeing it fairly clean. I've cleaned the upside. Volunteers want to come down here and help me flip it over or we'll clean the bottom side, but I don't feel like climbing underneath of it right now. It's got retractable landing gear. We just did the thousand hour gear inspection last summer, so we should be good for a while. I need two tires. I got a new one on the near side here. Next trip back to my mechanic, we'll get the other two tires. This plane has the three blade Macaulay prop. The last owner put this on. It's been very good for me so far. This is a 1964 aircraft and this the plane was designed clear back in 1957, the first model here was 1958. This was the last year of the Comanche 180. Really not too many changes. The big change for the later year of Comanche 180s is the panel. The engine's the same. They did away with the 180 because the 250 was selling better for a little bit more money. You could Go another 20 knots, 25 knots faster. You can see it's only a four-cylinder engine. Comanche 250 adds another two cylinders. The engine's been fantastic on this plane. Uh, we did add the electro air electronic ignition with fine wire plugs last summer. And that's changed uh, the starting and changed the performance slightly. I'm still getting used to that. Maybe we'll do another video on that later. One of the big problems I've had is with the exhaust system. There's an upgrade for that where you can go to dual exhaust, but uh, I'll do that someday in the future. Cabin's very roomy. I'm a not a small person, so it's nice to be able to sit next to a flight instructor that's not a small person and be rubbing shoulders. Every airplane is a compromise of speed, uh, useful load, carrying ability, and cabin space. Uh, this aircraft has a very nice compromise of those three, and I can carry 60 gallons of fuel and burning nine or ten gallons an hour, I can go a long ways. Nice large baggage compartment. I have a bag of headsets, a tool bag, cleaning, oil, some maintenance equipment, a tow bar. And on my trips home, I throw my dirty laundry, my computer, a couple other things in there, and there's still plenty of room. 
this same body style uh, later the 260 B I believe or 260 C they actually added a third row of seats I don't think it can carry six people but uh, but it has six seats number of seats is always a compromise between carrying fuel and people I guess I'll show you the uh, LED beacon on the, on the roof there I took out the rotating coffee grinder and put in the LED beacon in this airspace out here in Chicago I definitely want to be seen and uh, early on I had some failures with the rotating beacon the other thing we added was LED landing lights those are fantastic and when I get into busy airspace I just leave the landing lights on and I can be well seen look at the panel so the panel is 1964 um, this has been upgraded once in 1993 then I made some other minor upgrades to it so on the panel I have airspeed altitude directional gyro attitude indicator turn coordinator and vertical speed is down here this is a little unusual but uh, I have three CDI's when I purchased the aircraft we had KX 155's uh, communication and navigation radios so these CDI's one was for the uh, for a glide slope and the other for VORs and we added a GPS here it had a GPS 100 which was uh, way out of date and uh, we replaced that with a Garmin 375 which is a GPS transponder combo so we eliminated the transponder and uh, this is where we have our ADS-B out and in which is very nice. It Bluetooths to my iPad and ForeFlight so I can punch in my flight plan in ForeFlight and just hit a button and it goes to the panel. It's really nice. So this CDI is for the GPS and these are my two um, CDIs for the KX-155s. I did uh, do all my instrument training old style I added the GPS after I had my instrument ticket uh, and this was the beginning of 2020 we added the GPS and I got my instrument ticket in December of 2019 manifold pressure at RPM and then the uh, fuel gauges oil pressure oil temperature over here we'll be replacing the manifold pressure gauge uh, very shortly I have a electronics international digital gauge which will help me with the electronic ignition speaking of the electronic ignition if we look down here um, we have mixture throttle prop uh, over here are the switches for electronic ignition EIS and the left mag and a start button another notable item is the STEC 60 Dash 2 autopilot. Uh, it's been a great autopilot for me. It's not perfect. So uh, the larger turns or intercepting, I do that on heading mode. And then uh, I get onto the course and I'll switch over to nav mode. So flying an approach, I will fly heading mode, uh, turn on to the approach fix, switch over to heading. And then it'll fly LPV approaches with this GPS um, down to whatever minimums is.
Nice large back seat. I think they call that a hat rack back there. I don't really use that space for anything other than a sun shield for the visor. I think she's a great looking plane. This aircraft has treated me fantastic. I've really been blessed to uh, learn in it, get my uh, private pilot and instrument ticket in it, and it is my travel machine to get home to see my family from work. Why did I choose this machine? I might say it chose me. I started talking to a friend of mine that's a mechanic and airport manager and told him about my mission that I wanted to learn how to fly and have a plane to travel back and forth on a 450 mile trip. And he immediately said, have you looked at a Comanche? I was looking at other aircraft and to be honest, I had a budget of about 50,000 max. And that was including getting my, um, all my training. I did look at some glass airs. I looked at the Cherokee 180. Uh, those are all good planes, but this this one was uh, economical enough, uh, had the right speed. It was manageable enough for me to train in. I don't think I could have handled anything more higher performance at the time. Um, I have a couple of the speed mods on here. We have the one-piece windshield. We have the um, uh, the wheel fairings. Um, the, really, the only two speed mods left to add would be the uh, gap and flap seals and the uh, wing root fairing. And then I'd have uh, all the, most of the speed mods on here. Um, I'm told that would help me. That would get us another maybe uh, two knots, three knots, and help with. Uh, climb performance and, and high altitude performance. But uh, we did pretty good with the way she is. So I'm looking forward to testing out this uh, electronic ignition up high this uh, later this spring. Uh, I think I may invest in an oxygen bottle so I can stay up at 13 or 15,000 feet when the winds are favorable and uh, just see how it goes. I, I regularly fly at, at about nine to 11,000 feet right now, and I get very good performance up there. Uh, at, you know, with a tailwind at 65 or even 55 percent, I can still be doing 140, 150 knots and uh, burning eight gallons an hour. That's that's fantastic. So thanks for hanging out with me and checking out the plane. Um, if you want to do some cleaning, let me know and come down and help me clean. <laughs> but uh, I am really blessed to fly, blessed to have this aircraft, and uh, just like sharing it with you. So I hope you like the videos. Uh, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. And we'll be back in touch soon. Have a great day.